All right, so example three. This follows directly from what you just did in example two, but now we're just gonna talk about if you want to produce an inverse function, this is the key word. If you want to produce a function, you're gonna to have to restrict the domain. So we wanna restrict domain, not just for any purpose, but to intentionally produce a function. Okay, so last example, we just talked about this idea that inverses are reflective across the line y equals x. So as a reminder, real quick, we're gonna do a little graph here. So our f of x function is gonna be x squared. So we start at zero, zero, we go up one over one, nice little loop, go up one over one, nice little parabola. Okay, now in order for this function it's inverse, right? Again, the line y equals x, that nice line that goes right through the origin. Our inverse will have to be the parabola tipped on its side. So this is the inverse. The only problem is, people, is that, look, if you remember something called the vertical line test, okay, because let's say, let's pick like x is 4. Well, sometimes you're going to hit up here, but sometimes you're going to hit down here. Remember, it does not pass the vertical line test. So this fails the vertical line test, and therefore, hopefully we know that symbol, therefore those three dots in a triangle, it's not a function because it fails, look, it fails the vertical line test. So what we're saying is that we need to restrict the domain of the original so that our inverse is indeed a function. And here's how we're going to do that. So let me go back to blue. All right, so we're talking about this is our function x squared. Okay, so we're at 0, 0. We go up, up 1 over 1 right here. We have a nice parabola. We go up 1, left 1. Same idea. We got a nice parabola. Now, here's the thing is that we know that if we flip this onto its side, there's gonna be a point here and here right across from each other, which then when we flip it on its side, those are gonna be points that are on top of each other. And that's where functions fail. That's where relations fail to be functions is when you have two y values that correspond to the same x value. So in that case, if you look over here, I'm kind of following along here, we graphed the function. Okay, there's step one. Then we identify what we call these problem points because we know when we go to turn it on its side, those will then duplicate. So we don't want that. So we're going to then eliminate the duplicate y values. So essentially what we're going to do is we are going to only take the right side of the parabola. And we're only going to deal with that right side. Now, to figure out, you know, where the right side is, that's important, is that we need to find the vertex. So we got to find the vertex to know, well, where's that actual bottom of that U shape so that we know the right side and the left side. So I'm going to go through this because you should do it in your try it. We don't, we know that the vertex is at zero, zero. I know, we know that, but let's just do it because why not? So remember, to find our vertex, use this handy little formula, negative B over 2A. Okay, so this is x squared. So this is really x squared plus 0x plus 0. So we have our a values 1, our b values 0, and our c value is 0. So we're going to do negative 0 divided by 2 times 1, which is 0 over anything is going to be 0. And then remember, to find the y-coordinate, we evaluate at 0. So f of 0 is 0 squared, which is 0. So sure enough, our vertex, we knew, but it's at zero, zero. Okay, so then from zero, zero, we're only going to take things on the right side. So we're kind of going to cross out the left side of this parabola here. So that's what we mean when we say we're going to restrict the domain. So if zero, zero is our uh, vertex, we are only going to want to take things to the right side of that. 
So look what we're doing here. We're only going to take things to the right side. So we want only, uh, I'll pick the wrong blue, you jerk. We want only X's that are greater than or equal to zero, right? We only want the ones that are going over here. All these X values over here. So naturally enough, right? We say, okay, so we only want X values that are greater than zero. So sure enough, we could also have um, zero, zero. So here, let me pick a different color. Let's pick red. Okay, so let's make a quick table, right? Only X values that are bigger than zero. Tables are a great way to do that. So, right, remember our function is X squared. Okay, here, you know what, let's even be, let's be precise here, let's do X, F of X. All right, so we want zero. Zero squared is zero. We want one. One squared is one. We want two. Two squared is four. We want three. Three squared is nine. Okay, so we only want those X values because then when we go to flip it, we won't get those duplicates. So naturally then, naturally, let's switch to red here. Red seems to be our inverse function. So then naturally, well, what's our inverse table going to look like? Well, we're going to flip flop. 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, 9, 3. So let's go to the graph that we've made here. So we're going to go to 0, 0. We're going to go to 1, 1. We're going to go to 2, 3, 4, 2. And sure enough, oh, what are we working with here? For all you kids in my classes, we remember talking about this looks like an eyebrow function, which starts at... Zero, zero. So there's been no shifting up and down. Well, we know what type of function starts at zero, zero and kind of looks like that, that eyebrow shape, for lack of a better word. Well, sure enough, we know that it's square root of x. But we only want square root of x for x's that are greater than or equal to zero. Because we all certainly know what's going to happen if you put in a negative number underneath the square root. So this is where what we're saying, as long as we restrict the domain, we will then only get, we will get a function that's an inverse. Because look, if you look at the graph real quick, right? If you do the ver vertical line test, it's going to pass, it's going to pass, it's going to pass. Because we chopped off the left side of that original parabola. So when you want to make an inverse and guarantee it will be a function, Sometimes you need to restrict the domain of your original. In this case, we wanted to chop off the left side of the parabola so that we were only dealing with x values greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so give those a shot. So remember, think about where's that vertex because that will tell you where it splits to the left side and the right side. So think about if you want to only take the right side, think about which x values that will be based on where your vertex is. Okay, give those two a shot. You got it.